Hey everybody, welcome back to another Design Spark electrical tutorial overview video. If you've been following along, the previous video was all about project creation um, and covering our project tab and all the configurations that are built into each individual project, as well as our process tab where we can now number our wires and uh, or renumber our wires as well. This video is going to focus on the, the, the documents that come within the individual project. Again, with Design Spark Electrical, you are limited to a book with a cover sheet and three sheets within that project. If you try to add a new sheet, it will get a warning saying you've already hit your maximum of three sheets. But within that, you also have the ability to create either line diagrams or uh, detailed schematics. So for this video, we're going to focus on just our line diagrams. If you notice, I've already got a line diagram open, and this tab color is red, unlike uh, a schematic, which we'll see later is yellow, and a drawing file, that, like a symbol drawing file is purple. So they're easily identified by the color at the top here if you have a whole slew of them open at the same time. So inside of the line diagram tab, we have insert symbol, insert macro, draw cable, origin destination arrows, function outline, and location outline, um, and a few additional tools that we'll, we'll cover later on. But when we first want to start with a line diagram, what I like to use the line diagram for is more of that high-level overview drawing or a block diagram of, of what our overall system is going to look like. Um, it's not going to get into the nitty-gritty or the detail of the schematic just yet. But we are going to connect our line diagram to our schematic. And in order to do that, the first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and insert a symbol. So when we insert a symbol, the last symbol that we use is the one that will appear. If it's not the one we want, we can simply select other symbol and we can find the appropriate symbol within all the different classifications uh, as we need. But for this, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to go ahead and use this connector symbol here. Now, when I first drop that symbol in, this window here appears. This is the component, the symbol properties, the component properties for this. And these attributes that we can add or edit here, such as our description, are the component information. And the reason why I'm putting emphasis on that is because that there's two levels of information that I can pull from in order to create a very valuable bill of materials or even display the appropriate information on my schematics and my line diagrams. So again, there are two levels. This is the component level. So what is this part being used for? In this case here, I'm going to simply say, this is going to be enclosure power, whatever it may be. Uh, maybe it's uh, light stack power or light stack um, data cable, whatever it is. We want to put a description to what this part is potentially being used for. You also have additional fields here to include uh, even more information. We can change the root of this. If the symbol is not defined, we can change the root here um, and manually override that. We could put J, we could put P, we can put whatever we need to. I'm going to leave it as X for now. Now I also need to go in and I have to assign manufacturer part information. I can either search, which we will do in a second, or I do have the ability to add a new manufacturer part. So just like we did in our video previously where we dove into the manufacturer part library and added a new part, we have the ability to do that here live within our project. If I create a new part now, it will also be added to our library for future use. It's not just a one-time add to this particular project. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a part. Notice that because I was using a connector symbol, it automatically filtered down to connectors. It is a base component, which I explained in a previous video, a base component is the main part that has all of the connection points on it that our bill of materials, I'm sorry, not our bill of materials, our two from wireless is going to look at to create that two from wireless or cable list. Um, other examples we have other than base is auxiliary and accessory, the two most common types of 
parts that we are going to use. Um, but again, we're going to use a base part. If you know the manufacturer, which in this case I do, it's going to be the one that we created uh, in a previous video is that JEE1. I'm going to search and I now have that part available to me. In order to add it to the project, I still have to do one more step. It's either I can double click it and it will add it down here or I hit the plus sign and now it is added to this lower menu and I can now have that added to the project. So now when I hit OK, I've assigned manufacturer part to this component um, and it is recognized as this X1. If I take a look at my component tree on the left hand side, we see X1 and there is one symbol associated to that. So let's continue this cable. We'll make a cable assembly out of this and we can go ahead and either add a new symbol um, or a, the same symbol, a new symbol, or if we want to use the same symbol, nothing says we have to go right back into the symbol manager. We can come in and we can copy and paste and we can drop this into place. And notice that now I have X1 and I have X2. Both of them are the same. Uh, they've captured all the manufacturer part information as well. And it did not overwrite the existing information in the project. So you see now I have X1 and X2, and they both have the same thing. So let's take this a step further, and let's go ahead and add a cable between the two. I'm actually going to go ahead and, and move this out just a little bit further from where it is. There we go. So let's go ahead and draw a cable between these two. So drawing a cable, I have a few default options. These are just a, a great visual aid for maybe depending on the type of cable, maybe an RF line is green and an ethernet line is blue or ingoing line is red and a dash red line is, is out. However you wanna organize it, you can organize that through your manager here, the wire style manager. In this case here, I'm gonna keep it red. One thing I wanna note, a little tip on this is when you're working with line diagrams, I want to disable my O snaps, my object snaps. If you notice here, let's see if I can get it to appear here. See, I get my, you can kind of see it, my object snaps there. There's one. I have my midpoint snap associated to this. And I don't want to select it on the object snap because it's not officially making that connection between the two symbols. It's connecting to that snap point. So when you're trying to draw cables within your line diagrams, I would recommend you turn off your O snap. So down in the bottom right corner, simply select that, or you can select function F11 or F11 and turn those off. Now, when you're ready to draw that cable, you should have a green solid square anywhere around that box. Select that, select the other side, and now you've made that connection. You know you have a good connection when you see the two red uh, connection points that are officially added to make that new cable between the two. But now we have two connectors and we have this line that we're going to call a cable, but we don't have any information associated to this cable yet. So in order to add information to this cable, we need to add cable properties. So we're going to go ahead and reserve cable cores for this. Now, I've already gone ahead and I've added a cable to this project, but I'm going to delete that and we're going to start over so you can see what I mean. We have, as we saw in previous videos, we have a symbol library. We have a manufacturer part library, even a title block library. We also have a cable library. But now we have to define which cables from that library we want to be a part of this particular project. So I'm going to go ahead and select new cable and I'm going to pull a, pro, a, a pull a cable from that library and add it to this particular project. So I'm going to grab this one here. And just like that, I now have W1 a part of this project. If I need to change the properties, I can always come in here and maybe make it cable 001. And now I have this new cable. I'm still in the reserve core functionality when I right clicked on that cable. So I'm going to go ahead and simply select this cable 
and say, yes, I want you to be cable 0011. If I want, I can move this around. It doesn't have to be directly on the line. Um, I have the ability to move that. If I need to change the size of this, and I want to make it a little bit smaller. I would come into my project configurations and I can find, I believe it is under mark where I can come in and I can edit, maybe it's under text, where I can edit the, the size of that font for that cable itself. So we've gone ahead and we created a very, very basic line diagram symbol, uh, symbol cable assembly essentially, right? Again, what I like to use the line diagram for is that high level overview, something that is just gonna give me a general idea of how my entire project is gonna lay out. The next video, we're gonna get into the detailed schematic and connecting new symbols to these existing symbols. So now we can start to build our project and make it a lot more robust and a lot more intelligent going forward. So I hope this helps and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.